Hey everyone, welcome to the fourth video in the Fanic Focus series. We're going to be trying something new today, so let's get to it. Today, I figured we'd go over to how to read programs from the Fanic. In the Fanic, there are two types of programs, the main program and a sub-program. The difference between them is that the main program is activated using Fanic screens and a sub-program is called from inside the main program. Sub-programs typically perform an action such as a tool change and then return to the main program. But before we get into the code, we need to understand the two type of program names available to the Fanic controller. We can either use O names or ASCII file names. O names consist of the letter O followed by four or eight numerical digits, depending on how your machine is configured. An ASCII file name is anything else. The computer or lab type you use every day uses ASCII file names. It usually takes the form of a name of the application followed by a file extension. In the FANIC controller, you can usually see .nc, .anc, and .txt file extensions. However, a file extension is not necessary, and you may have programs in your controller with no file extension at all. While main programs can use O names or ASCII file names, subprograms can only use O names because of how they are called in the main program. Let's take a quick look at the InventCom page for the functions we will be using. By now, if you've been following along in the series, you should be familiar with InventCom, so we will just quickly go over what we need. To read the main program, we will use the cnc underscore exe program name function call. This is a simple function that only takes two arguments. The first is the FANUC handle, and the second is an instance of the ODB exe prg structure. The ODB exe prg structure contains two fields the name field and an onum field. When you try to read an O name, the name field would contain the O and the four or eight digit number, and the onum field will only contain the number portion of the O name. When reading an ASCII file name, the name field will contain the file name and the onum field will contain zero. In Visual Studio, I have started a new project and named it Read Fanic Program Demo. I already have the code added to connect to the controller. If you don't have this code, go back and watch this video. Now we can start on our function to read the main program name. First, I'll make my function return a string and call it get main program name. It'll take exactly zero arguments. Then, as always, we're going to check to make sure we have a FANUC handle. If not, we exit and return whatever you want. I'm going to return the word unavailable. Next, I'll create an instance of the ODB exe prg structure. We can then call the cnc underscore exe program name function and feed it our focus handle and the structure. We always want to capture the return code which will be a short. I have mine going to underscore rent. We will then check the return code to make sure it's zero. I tend to use the ew underscore ok which is a focus variable equal to zero. If the return code is anything other than zero we will return the error code as a string. If everything has gone well the active program name will be stored in the name field. The name field is a character array so I'm going to convert it to a string using new string. Note that the character array is null terminated, so we want to trim off any trailing null characters, which is what the trim method is doing. When the FANUC enters a subprogram, the program name changes to that of the subprogram. So you can technically read both the main and subprogram names using the CNC exe prg name function. Since subprograms can only use O names, there is another method that we can use to read the subprogram name. The problem with doing it this way is that we don't have a good method of determining when we are in a subprogram rather than the main program. That's why I prefer to use the cnc underscore read program number function when reading a subprogram. Looking at the inventcom page for this function, we can see that it takes two arguments, the focus handle and an instance of the ODB Pro structure. The ODB Pro structure has three fields, a dummy field that isn't used, a data field that tells us the running program number, and the mdata field that tells us the main program number. When both the data and the mdata fields are the same, we are in the main program. When the two fields are different, we are in a subprogram. The subprogram will always be read from the data field. Pause the video and see if you can create a function to read the subprogram yourself. If you've been following along in this video series, I bet you already have a good idea of how to use this function. Here comes my solution in one, two, three. So, how did you do? Were you able to come up with a working solution? Here's what I came up with. Like normal, we check the focus handle and return if it's zero. Then we create the ODB Pro structure and call the CNC read program number function, passing in the handle and the structure. After, we need to check to make sure the call completed successfully, and finally, we check to see if the data and mdata fields are the same. 
If they are different, we return the value of the data field which holds the currently running subprogram. Otherwise, we return a string indicating that there is no subprogram currently running. Before I run the program, we need to write the values to the console so we can see them. I'm going to create an infinite loop in the main function and use a couple of console.write calls inside the loop. I'll also add a thread.sleep to keep it from running at full speed. On the machine I have two programs, the main program tprogn and the subprogram o3003. Inside the main program I am waiting 5 seconds then calling the subprogram. The subprogram waits for 5 seconds and then returns back to the main program which will wait another 5 seconds before it finishes. Let's run the program to see our code in action. Alright everyone, thanks for watching. As always, I hope these videos are useful to you. If you like this video, subscribe and leave a thumbs up. If you disliked it, a thumbs down. Until next time.